Okay, so here's another example for us to kick around. What's happened here is we have an electrical circuit where you've got a resistor, you drive a certain amount of current through it, and then you measure the voltage drop across it. Or the other way to think of it is, you put a certain current through a resistor and then you see how much voltage did it take to drive that current. And so, if we try to graph this, we're going to have... These currents are kind of annoying numbers because they're all small decimals. We'll have to work with that. This would be the current in amperes or amps, and this would be the voltage measured, not surprisingly, in volts. So our current goes 0 0.05, 0 0.10, or 0 0.010, 0 0.015, 0 0.020, 25, 0 0.030, uh, I'm going to need more room here, 35, 0 0.040, 45.050. And our voltage only goes up to 10, so we can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That should be okay. And if we plot our data, we've got 0 0.015 goes with 3 volts, so that current goes with... 3.025, which is between 20 and 30, goes with 5 volts, right about there. 35 goes with 7 volts. This is looking fairly straight liney, that's encouraging. And 0 0.050 goes with 10 volts. And if we connect those, why yes, we do get a fairly linear graph, which means we can use this y equals mx thing. Or in this case, we would say the voltage, that's our y coordinate, is some number m times our current. Yes, I just put I for current. That really is what they use in electronics. Uh, capital C is capacitance, so we can't use that. They use lowercase c for the speed of light, so we can't use that either. So they had to go to a whole other letter for current. It's a bit vexing, but you get used to it. So this is our formula, and now the question is, can we find a slope? We know slope is, say it with me, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for our y's we could use like 10 volts minus 3 volts. I, I almost always use the last and first points, but you're not required to. You could use any pair of points and it should come out the same. So 10 take away 3, and then for our currents, our x's, we have 0 0.050 minus 0 0.015. Ten take away three is seven. Point oh fifty minus fifteen is point oh thirty five. Divide that out and you get two hundred for our M. So the formula governing this thing is V equals two hundred I. If you know your circuitry, you know we just found that this resistor is two hundred ohms. And even if you don't, you now know you've got a linear equation that you could use to predict currents and voltages. You've learned something you didn't know about an electric circuit, so that's all rather neat.